Uh, I'm talking about uh, debugging Bitcoin and uh, that means um, to me using loggers and uh, debugging tools um, to work with Bitcoin and that uh, is especially useful for somebody who is a beginner with Bitcoin development I think um, or even a beginner to C++ uh, which I considered myself a couple of weeks ago actually. Um, and so, um, yeah, let's just see. Um, I'm going to tell the story uh, of a uh, fictional beginner to Bitcoin development. Uh, just uh, this disclaimer just means um, why you may, may think you recognize some names. Um, uh, just assume everything is made up what I did here because I just, uh, yeah, I actually did. I did make it all up. Um, and uh, so let's say you starting out uh, with Bitcoin um, as a junior and uh, yeah, you um, start on your first day and you get some assignments, some very basic stuff. Um, and so you just try to find your way around the code base and you know, logging, um, uh, you look around, you see log print F, something that looks useful and also see out, um, that's, that's something you find. Um, and you do that and you also found that there is a debug.log file and so after running a Bitcoin yourself um, you try to grab the debug.log file but you don't find any of the strings that you thought you would be logging. Uh, so what's really going on here? Um, you think okay um, I will just um, ask in the chat uh, because I mean it's my first day so somebody can help me out. Um, so of course uh, you ask very nicely, hey, the, the logging is not working. Um, so a uh, helpful senior developer comes along and uh, answers you in the chat. Uh, or asks you the biggest question, uh, have you forgotten to recompile? And let's be honest, you probably did. Um, but uh, after you recompile, uh, still you don't see the logs. Um, so you tell him, uh, of course I did not forget to recompile, um, but any other ideas why this could not work? Um, and the senior developer is very helpful, so he reminds you that uh, there are different environments that you run Bitcoin in, and actually if you looked at the path closely that I just showed, um, we were actually in uh, mainnet and not in rec test, which you probably mostly use when you're developing locally. Um, and so that's the first thing that you have to keep in mind, and that's basically the overarching message from, uh, from this talk. Um, as a beginner, you have to remember that uh, there are different environments in terms of tests and, and in terms of running Bitcoin. Um, and you mostly, if, if you don't find what you're looking for or if it doesn't work what you're doing in terms of debugging, uh, you're usually in the wrong place or looking in the wrong place um, or just using something that is logging to the wrong place or something like that. Um, so what the developer said, of course, was right. Um, we actually see that um, the um, logging to standard out is uh, showing out in standard out um, as uh, does the log printf. Um, but the standard out, what we are writing, does not show up in, in debug.log. Um, but at least we find the log printf in the debug.log that is in rec test here. So that sounds great. Um, you make your full pull request, uh, first pull request maybe, and you get some feedback. Uh, you were asked to um, add some unit tests, and you also learned from uh, your mistake earlier and don't want to embarrass yourself again in the chat. Um, so this time you actually Google, um, and there's another senior developer, Andrew. He um, actually wrote some very informative uh, message on uh, the stack exchange and you can see there okay um, if I uh, want to do a unit test then I have to use this other binary this test Bitcoin binary um, and uh, I'm also using a boost here um, as the testing framework so I have to use these boost test messages and I also have to remember this uh, log level all um, and so you try this out and um, this is actually pretty straightforward it actually works as you would expect. So we're using this test Bitcoin here. Um, this is just to choose a particular test run uh, with log level all and this boost message test um, comes out, he out here um, as you kind of expect. So 
unit test pretty straightforward. Um, so we think, um, okay, uh, what's something more that we can do with this? Um, we've heard of these debuggers. Um, so let's try that out. Uh, just to remind you what debugger actually is, if anyone doesn't know, um, debugger or um, what what we're using here is GDB or LLDB. I have a Mac, LLDB works a little bit better here, uh, but if you're on Linux, you'll probably use GDB, but it doesn't really matter because they are almost the same, um, just a few different commands. Um, debugger is um, when you start an executable, you can set some breakpoints in a program, and then as you um, uh, run the program, then it stops at the, the points where you have to set the breakpoints, and then you can inspect variables, and you can step through the, the command line by line, uh, so it's very helpful, um, especially as a beginner also, to understand how to use this because it just accelerates your learning um, and it also um, yeah, helps you to um, be much more productive. Um, and so basically if you use this with uh, test Bitcoin, it actually works um, also very straightforward. So um, you use uh, LLDB to run test Bitcoin. Um, actually, it's not running yet. It's actually um, LLDB is running with uh, that uh, test Bitcoin as a target. Um, then you can set uh, B a breakpoint, and uh, then you run, uh, giving here the um, any parameters that you would normally hand to test Bitcoin, um, and then you're stopping at the point where you set the breakpoint. So this is really good, um, and so you think, okay. Red, I don't know. Hello. Maybe a battery. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, yeah. So um, then you also want to add some functional tests, um, and so you think, okay, this uh, was was very straightforward with the unit test, so this should just work very easy, easily. Um, functional test, uh, global definition, um, are tests that um, are executed from the view of a user. So um, we are basically describing how a user or actually several users might behave. And um, this is then running an RPC or um, some, uh, yeah, or basically from the view of the CLI. And um, these are implemented in Python in um, uh, Bitcoin. And um, if you look in the Python code, if you want to log from there, you can just use self-log.debug. Uh, um, and you can use uh, PDB, which is a debugging tool in Python. Um, and um, this also works very easily. But if you then want to um, log from the, uh, Bitcoin, uh, from the C++ code, um, or if you actually want to use GDB, LLDB um, in the C++ code, then it gets a little bit more tricky. Uh, because the Python is running Bitcoin D in the background and there's just not a really easy way to um, get to it. Um, so yeah, that means we have to do something a little more um, that's not so straightforward. We actually need a game plan. So something like this. And uh, Let's all get together and uh, I'll tell you the game plan. Um, so first what we're going to do is we, of course, have to run the functional test um, and let it start the Bitcoin D process. Um, but then we need to stop the functional test because we can want to get to the Bitcoin D process. Um, so for that, we're going to uh, set a PDB. We're going to use PDB to, to stop that. Um, and then... <clears throat> Um, we have to find the Bitcoin D process, which is technically running but not doing anything because um, the functional test is not doing anything. And we have to attach to it using LLDB and we have to set a breakpoint. Um, and at that point, we can uh, use PDB and uh, tell it to continue. Um, and then the C++ code is going to actually run into um, the breakpoint that we set with LLDB. Um, and optionally, we also want to uh, maybe change the 60 second timeout that is running in general on the functional test. Um, so uh, we do the PDB to stop the functional test. Um, we run the functional test here. It's a prompt. Um, we go to the other tab. Oh, sorry. We go to the other tab. Uh, we run uh, LLDB with hopefully the right PIT. 
um, we set the breakpoint here on the function or the line or whatever we want. Uh, we let the Bitcoin D process continue. Um, then we let the um, Python functional test continue. Um, and then we are stopping at the right point. So I was saying in the beginning, uh, my main message here is uh, context awareness. So when you're starting out, uh, there are several contexts, uh, the unit test, the functional test, running Bitcoin D yourself. Um, and you want to log from the test, you want to log from Bitcoin D, from C++ code, from Python code. Um, and you just have to um, kind of have a mental map of where you are and where you have to look to get actually the, the output that you, that you need. Um, so um, I actually have in the end a document that you can look at. So this is not really that important, but yeah, this is just these different dimensions of uh, test driver. Uh, Bitcoin D context and uh, are you doing things manually using CLI for example, are you having run, uh, running unit tests, are you running functional tests, etc. Um, some things that are left out uh, for debugging in general, um, mostly you find these in the readmes, but uh, really important to install Ccache um, and also um, remove parts uh, from the compiler that you don't need, like the GUI for example, if you're not a GUI developer. Um, and uh, disable optimizations as well, so uh, the compiler doesn't um, remove all the um, symbol names and so on, otherwise you cannot really see anything. Um, I also left out um, segfault tools um, because it's a different category of um, stuff that you might need to debug and I was focusing on things that also could help um, beginners uh, that maybe don't really have a huge bug that they need to they need to work on, but instead they want to just maybe look around in the code and really see what's happening. Uh, but but all this stuff is also in the document. So um, if you feel like um, this is something that is uh, going to help you, um, you um, also cannot keep these things uh, in your head maybe. Um, here I have uh, written a pretty, um, pretty long uh, GitHub uh, markdown file where um, I'm just describing all the different commands that are in here. Um, and um, yeah, it's still a work in progress, so maybe it's not, it's not ideal, but um, I'm lo looking for feedback and uh, maybe also something that can go somehow or at least parts of it into the Bitcoin readmes. Um, and also this is now just optimized for Mac, so um, if you have to adapt something for Linux, it um, shouldn't be hard, but um, I would be uh, grateful if you um, give me some feedback on that, then I can also um, add these commands to the readme. Thanks.